Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I welcome you to this new week. Praise God. Now, we just finished studying the book of 1 Corinthians last week, Friday. And this week, we're going to be going into something else that the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you. And I know it's going to be really, really interesting. And, and what are we talking about this week? We're talking about life lessons from the scriptures or from the Bible. Life lessons. Now, the purpose of this is how do we form our characters to conform with what God's mind is? See, God has his mindset for everything. And it will do you good if you align with God and then you will see results. Most times, people struggle simply because they don't align with what God wants. And this is one thing you need to understand first of all. God already has a plan for you. The truth is you were created to fulfill that plan. You know, sometimes people think uh, God just created us and dropped us here and allowed us to figure out what we'll be by ourselves. No, you were created. Ah, I, I wish you will understand this. You were created to fulfill a specific purpose. Yeah, that's why your name is in the book of life in the first place. Otherwise, maybe your name is not even there. See, if your name is in the book of life, it's the book of life is not just a name. I've said this several times. It's not just a book that contains list of names. It's a book that is full of God's plan. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah full of God's plan. So when your name is mentioned, is a whole, speaking of it in computer sense, when your name is mentioned, is a whole program that your name represents. See? So the day you were created, your program was opened. That's your book was opened. And your job is to align with the Holy Spirit to fulfill everything that is written concerning you. Now, this is why it's important you, you align your character to God's word. And when you do that, I'm telling you this, not just because I read it, I'm telling you this also from my experience working with God. It's when you do that, that you will see things begin to become easy for you. Things will begin to function properly. Everything around you will just begin to function right. Praise God. So... So as we go, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open our understanding. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you. Holy Spirit, Jesus said concerning you that you will guide us into all truth. That's one thing we hold on to, that he did not lie. And you are here now. So we submit to your workings in our lives. And we trust and know that when you are done, we will realize that we have walked in truth. Thank you, Lord. Even as your word is coming forth, I declare that every burden is being removed, every yoke is being destroyed in the life of everyone hearing the sound of my voice right now. Healings are taking place already in their bodies. Things are changing for their good. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, so I said, we, we are going to be looking at life lessons from the scriptures. Uh, and, and, and this is all about character formation or character, aligning your character to fit into God's word and God's plan. Now, uh, by, by the time we're done, you know, each broadcast, we're going to take maybe a story in the scriptures and then we're going to extract everything we can extract from it. But first of all, I need you to understand something. As Christians, why do we hold the Bible there? You see, many people don't know. Many people don't even know why we believe in Jesus. Many people don't know. See, they think it's just a religious thing that we do. 
So Jesus uh, is just like you are following Jesus. And, and someone else says, oh, I'm following something else. Or I'm following someone else. Stay on your lane and I'll stay on my lane. No, sir. No. It's not, it's not a choice thing per se. Now, understand what I mean. At the end of the day, it's left for you to believe or not to believe. But, you see, to believe in Jesus Christ is not something you can say, if I, if I don't believe in Jesus Christ, I will still go by. No. So why do we believe the Bible? Why do we hold the Bible there? Why do we study the scriptures? I've told you this before. Many times people confuse what the Bible is. They don't know. And you see, if you don't understand this, your relationship with the Bible would not be perfect. Some people think that the Bible is the word of God. So when you open it, when you read, this is God talking to you. So, so you want to just, when somebody just say, but the Bible says this. You say, oh, oh, since you say the Bible says this, okay, no problem. I can't argue with the Bible. <laughs> now, that, that's, that's how some people think. Question is, is that right or is that the truth? I've told you this several times, and, and it, it will do you good if you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to give you the definition of what the Bible is and what the Word of God is. They are not the same thing. Now, you will hear some people say the Bible contains the Word of God. Now, that is true. And then some will say, no, 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 the Bible is the Word of God. Now, when you say the Bible is the Word of God, you will be making some mistakes or you'll be leading people to error. Why? It's not everything in the Bible that is the Word of God. Did God speak in the Bible? Yes, He did speak in the Bible. Is there everything that is written in the Bible that is God's Word? Of course you know that is not true. Satan spoke in the Bible also. You've heard that popular story about someone who's trying to do, you know what we call, in those days, what we call draw your sword. And so, so you feel anything you open any part of the Bible you open is God that is speaking to you. See, So someone says, okay, I'm go I want God to speak to me. Oh God, speak to me. And then he opened his Bible. And the first place he opened is, and Judas went to hang himself. Mm. Say, no, 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 no. No, this can't be God speaking to me. This can't be God. Let me do it again. Lord, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So one more time, second witness. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And then he opens and his, his eyes fell to the scripture that says, Go ye and do likewise. And he said, Ah, no, 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 no. So okay, I'm going to do it again. So, Lord, the third witness, the third witness. And then you open it and it says, What thou doest, do quickly. <laughs> you know? and, and, and now you don't know what to do. And as someone who doesn't understand, you say, Hmm. He starts thinking of all his sins he has committed. I say, It's like I'm doomed. This one that. The Bible or God is clearly telling me that I should go and hang myself just like Judas did hang himself. But you know that is not true. God did not tell Judas to go hang himself. He didn't. So God never told Judas to go hang himself. No, he didn't. It was Judas who felt terrible for what he had done. You know how the mind works. See, Judas thought he was playing a fast one on Jesus. His intention was never to get Jesus killed. He just loved money. So when he saw that his action had led to the death of Jesus, he couldn't handle it. He couldn't forgive himself. Now that tells a lot about who G Judas was. Now that's another day talk. But you see, he couldn't see any future again anywhere. He, he couldn't see the love of God in any way. He, he couldn't see repentance. He couldn't find repentance in his heart. So what's the option? I've done something terrible. Let me just kill myself. And that's what happened to him. So, so it wasn't God that judged him. It wasn't God that sent him to go kill himself. You need to understand that. So the same way God can never tell you, you are doomed to die. No. You see, sometimes, that, that's why I say, we need to understand the difference between the Word of God and what is written in the Bible. So what is the Bible? Or what is the Word of God, first of all? What is the Word of God? The Word of God is simply God's communication with you by the Holy Spirit. See, every communication, now that can be read, that can be heard, 
See? It can be in a dream. It can be, but, but you see, there must be a communication. Now, sometimes people find it, find it difficult to know the difference between the Word of God and their mind. But it's very simple, and I pray you understand this. This is the difference. Sometimes I want to hear God, but sometimes I think it's my mind that is speaking to me. It's very simple. Your mind cannot give you an information you don't already know. See? So your mind would remind, your mind will remember. Oh, so so person told me something yesterday. Yes, your mind can do that. But your mind cannot tell you what is that it doesn't know already. Your mind cannot tell you, oh, um, someone is trying to steal your car. And you say, I'm sitting there. So, so suddenly I just, I just felt someone is trying to steal my car. So I got up and went and I actually saw someone trying to fiddle with my car door. Now that wasn't your mind. So what was that? That was of course not the devil. Because the devil will steal the car already. Praise God. So, so what was that? That's God talking to you. And how, how you mean God talking to you? The Holy Spirit was the one telling you that. Now, because most times people don't hear a voice, you know, because you see, the, 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 the more you get acquainted with the Lord, the more these things begin to straighten out personally for you. See, so sometimes when we say, oh, the Lord said to me, the Lord said, it's not necessarily because we heard God say, my son, this is what I want you to do. But you see, because we've known the difference between his word coming to us and our mind speaking. So when, 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 when it's his word, we say, the Lord said this to me. See, that's just the difference. You, you, you get what I'm saying. Secondly, now when God speaks to you, his word is truth. What do I mean his word is truth? Everything God tells you. See, how you know his God is, if you decide not to act on it today, you wait three days time, you think about it, it's still the same thing. It will not change. One year time, one year, you wait for one year, it's still the same thing. Why? Because his word will never change. See, you, you find someone say, oh, oh um, uh, a prophet told me something. Say, I should not do this. So I didn't do it. Then later on, he came and said, now the Lord has said I should do it. Now, when, 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 when you have an experience like that, you need proper explanation. Can the Lord tell me to hold on on a thing and later tell me to do Yes, he can. But you see, he will tell me the second time. I will know the reason. By the second time, I will see the reason why he says I shouldn't do it then, but I should do it now. See? But not in the area of God changing his mind. When God says, this thing is not for you. Okay, God told me this is not, not for me. Then tomorrow he comes and says, God said this is what I must do. Then something is wrong with that. Praise God. So, so you need to understand this thing so that you begin to align your mind properly and those are the kind of things we're going to be dealing with so you would perfectly know and how to walk with the lord and get all the blessing that the lord gives to you praise god listen we are in for a great time I know. So, so get ready. Get your heart ready. Get your writing materials. Just make up your mind that this week things are going to change for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I bless everyone right now. Thank you. This week, Holy Spirit, you are opening up the gate of truth in our hearts. There will be a flood of knowledge and understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that as they go out today, they will find pastures indeed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.